right, so uh, let's dive into something pretty wild this time. Right. We're talking Mark Zuckerberg, the you know the Meta CEO. Yeah. And uh, his latest attempt, I guess, at expressing love. Uh huh. A collaboration with T Pain covering Little John's "Get Low." Oh wow! Yeah, you heard that right. Okay. The uh, the hoodie, an awkward silence. Zuck serenading his wife. Okay. With an auto-tuned anthem, usually heard in uh, well, very different settings. Right. We've got a stack of articles, social media reactions, even some music analysis. Wow. So buckle up, because this deep dive is going to unpack what this bizarre event reveals about Zuck celebrity and maybe even modern relationships. This isn't just some random billionaire whim. Right. It's actually a fascinating piece of a larger puzzle. Okay. See, we all have that image of Zuckerberg, the hoodie, the stilted interviews, the guy more at ease with code than people. Yeah. But lately, there's been a very deliberate shift. The gold chains, the oversized tees, now the musical collab. It's like Zuckerberg 2.0 is trying to be the relatable billionaire. Uh -huh. The question is, does it work, right? Because the classic Zuck image is deeply ingrained in public perception. Yeah. It's tied to Facebook's controversies, to the idea of tech elites being out of touch. Right. A song, even one as weirdly catchy as this, might not rewrite that narrative. And catchy it is in a can't look away from a train wreck kind of way. Oh, yeah. I mean, get low. Really? For an anniversary gift. Wow. The song choice alone is meme worthy. Right. Then you add Zuckerberg's vocals, which let's be honest, aren't going to win any Grammys. Yeah. And T-Pain's signature auto tune. And you've got this sonic landscape that's both hilarious and strangely compelling. That's interesting. The internet, of course, exploded. Yeah. You've got bewildered tweets, think pieces, analyzing the deeper meaning or lack thereof. And even some surprisingly positive reviews. Wow. People are streaming this thing. Oh, really? Over 30,000 Spotify listens. That's something. So is it ironic enjoyment? Mm. Morbid curiosity, or has Zuck accidentally tapped into a whole new demographic of autotune loving tech enthusiasts? It's wild, I'll tell you that. But the real question is what does Priscilla think about all of this? Right. She's the one who's been with Zuckerberg through it all. Yeah. The rise of Facebook, the Cambridge Analytica scandal, the whole metaverse pivot. <laughs> and now you this, her reaction to the song was so romantic. Yeah, I saw that. Accompanied by what many have described as nervous laughter. Yeah, like she didn't know what else to do. Which begs the question, is this truly a grand gesture of love from a tech billionaire? Or is Priscilla just incredibly patient and supportive, even when faced with an auto-tune serenade about, well, you know. About sweat dripping down his balls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and th that brings us to the heart of it, the Zuckerberg-Chan dynamic. Right. We tend to focus on Mark, the public figure. Yeah. But Priscilla is a fascinating figure in her own right. Oh, absolutely. A Harvard-educated pediatrician a philanthropist with her own initiatives. Uh -huh. She's clearly not just a tech CEO's arm candy. No, not at all. So how does she navigate being married to someone constantly in the spotlight? Right. Someone whose attempts at relatability often fall flat. Yeah, does she find this whole musical endeavor endearing, yeah. embarrassing? Right. Or maybe she just sees it as another quirky chapter in their relationship, a story they'll be telling their grandkids one day. And let's not forget, this isn't just about one couple. Right. It taps into a larger societal fascination with the ultra wealthy. Yes. Theft. Their relationships and their often bizarre attempts to seem normal. Exactly. We see this with celebrity couples all the time. The carefully curated Instagram posts. Yeah. The public displays of affection that seem more performative than genuine. Right. There's this constant tension between their extraordinary wealth and influence and their desire to be seen as just like us. It's a really interesting dynamic. So where does all this leave us? Is Z-Pain just another internet oddity destined to be forgotten in a week? Or is it a sign of something deeper? A glimpse into the psyche of a tech titan trying to bridge the gap between his digital empire and the messy, unpredictable world of human emotion. Hmm. It's hard to say for sure. Maybe this whole thing will blow over, becoming nothing more than a footnote in the Zuckerberg saga. Yeah. Or maybe it'll become a cultural touchstone. You know, right. a reminder that even billionaires with the best PR teams can't always control their image. But here's what's really fascinating to me. It shows that even in a world of curated social media feeds and perfectly crafted personas, there's still a yearning for authenticity, even if it comes in the form of a hilariously awkward, auto-tuned love song. And that, my friends, is the beauty of it all. I think so. Whether you're a tech CEO, 
a celebrity or just a regular person trying to navigate the complexities of love and relationships. We're all susceptible to moments of cringe, to those grand gestures that miss the mark in spectacular fashion. Oh, absolutely. So the next time you find yourself cringing at a public display of affection, just remember Z-Pain and take comfort in the fact that even the most powerful people in the world can be just as awkward and endearingly human as the rest of us.